Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for being here today. My name is Nyoka and uh, today's video is going to be a uh, talking about candle wax as well as going over some fragrances that I purchased this month. Um, if you were new here, I try to post fragrance review videos and candle making videos at least once a month. I feel like I'm kind of behind, but everything's been kind of crazy here, so uh, I apologize for that, but it's usually once a month. Uh, typically, I will post weekly tarot reading videos on true crime cases, on self cases, so if you're interested in any of that, please consider subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Uh, so for today's video, I want to get right into it. Um, I kind of have not a lot to go over, but I am trying a new candle wax, and so um, I want to talk about that with you guys. For those of you who watch regularly, you know that for my candle wax, I typically use C3 Soy Wax, and for my wax melts, I use the Pro Blend 650 from Flaming Candle. That is a tart wax, and uh, I absolutely love the Pro Blend 650. That is my all-time favorite wax for wax melts. Uh, definitely, if you are trying to make molds, whether it be flowers, hearts, unicorns, whatever the case may be, that is a beautiful wax to work with because it is very firm. It's not over firm, but it's firm enough to be able to pop right out of those molds. I have all sorts of molds that I make. I have the little marijuana leaves, I have hearts, I have flowers, you know, and so that is a very, very good wax to work with. Even in the clamshells like this, you want it to be able to have someone have the ability to pop out one square and not have it all mushy and stuck to it and, you know, just a mess. And so the Pro Blend 650 is a really good wax for that if that's what you're looking for. Hot Throat is amazing. These babies pack a punch. All you need is one, one cube. One cube for a room and that is sufficient. I've had some customers tell me that one cube for a house is sufficient. So they can be very, very strong. I do use 16% fragrance oil, so that is also why it's very strong. However, you know, Etsy, as we know, is not uh, the cheapest place to shop. And I know that, you know, especially as a seller, there's so many things to accommodate for shipping, you know, the products, all your effort going into the product, everything that you buy for your product, it does take a lot. And so in order to compensate and make something, you're going to, you know, possibly spend anywhere between five to, I've seen these as high as nine, nine dollars. Um, people will sell these for when you can get this at Walmart or Target for, you know, two ninety nine or one ninety nine even. Um, but I feel like if somebody is willing to support my small business on Etsy, the least I can do is put out a quality product that uh, has some buck for their, you know, a little bit of bang for their buck and something that is going to last. Uh, so they can use just one cube and stretch it out and that will be strong enough for them. So nothing but good things to say about Pro Blend 650. And n I love the C3 soy wax as well. Again, those of you who watch these videos, you know that I use these large salsa jars that are 16 ounces. I sell them as a 14 ounce candle. I sell them as 14 ounces because I, I know that 16 ounces is going to be up here at the top, the fill line, and I know that um, I, I can't fill it that high, even though I do try to fill it as high as I possibly can. I think I measured it once and I think that, that they're getting probably 15 point something uh, ounces so it's not a full 16 ounces so that's why I sell it as 14 ounces but it is a 16 jar or a 16 ounce jar rather but because I use these they are glass they are see-through um, I noticed that with the C3 I have a lot of glass adhesion problems and I have always had glass adhesion problems and I brought this candle out specifically because if you notice, I can see kind of, I don't know if you can really see, uh, but right here, there is kind of a line. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but there is kind of a line right here. And uh, adhesion just makes it look like there's wet spots. It just, it, it's like a big, huge wet spot right here. And although it doesn't affect the quality of the burn, 
or the quality of the candle. It doesn't have any effect on that whatsoever. It is still unsightly. And that has been one of the one things I think with C3 that I have struggled with oh so much. Um, I have tried everything from wrapping my candles up in tin foil to using a heat gun and heating them up uh, quite a, a bit before pouring my wax, making sure that I'm pouring my wax into the jar very, very slowly. Um, so I have done everything that I feel like I can to reduce the glass adhesion problem and it still doesn't seem to do the trick. And so uh, I started even using the Vibar 260 to help with glass adhesion. And uh, that is still not helping. It helped a little bit, but not a whole lot. It didn't take care of the problem. And so um, I've really been having some problems with just the unsightliness. Somebody buys a candle and I go and I pick it up off the shelf and I see this thing here. And I'm just like, wow, you know, uh, it just makes me feel a certain way that I got to send out a candle that has a big wet spot on the side of it, even though that that doesn't affect the candle, it still bothers me. So a couple of weeks ago, I was on the Flaming Candle website and I was purchasing uh, my ProBlend 650. And I started just kind of looking around at the different waxes that they have. And I was actually in the paraffin section because the Pro Blend is a paraffin wax. And so I was in that paraffin kind of, uh, you know, subsection and I started looking at different waxes. And I came across a candle wax called the Pro Blend 400. And that piqued my interest because I have had such good luck with the ProBlend 650 that I started looking into this ProBlend Pro 400 and I thought, well, what is this about? Let, let's see what this is. And so it is a 100% paraffin wax. It is for container candles. And it, I wanted to give it a try. And, you know, I'm really kind of... Um, I don't know. Uh, the one thing that I have been happy to provide is a 100% all natural soy wax candle. And that is what I want to continue to provide. But there are some things that I would like to improve upon. And so, uh, you know, even hot throw, hot throw is okay. But when you have a soy candle, that is one of the things that you are going to have to deal with is I don't want to say a weak hot throw, but it's not going to be the same hot throw as a paraffin candle. There is a difference between soy wax and paraffin wax. Soy wax, I don't care what you do, you're not going to be able to have the same hot throw as you do with a paraffin candle. Two different types of waxes, they react completely different. The only thing about the paraffin, you get a phenomenal hot throw, but you have more toxins. Okay, so it's it's got the you know it's got more soot issues it's got all those things that in the air emitting into the air things that you don't necessarily get when you have a soy candle now soy candles aren't perfect but they're a whole lot less um they're they produce a whole lot less toxins than a paraffin candle so that was one of the reasons why i wanted to stay with soy wax okay and i have been happy with the c3 like i said but I had an inkling to kind of try something different and I ended up on the Pro Blend 400 which is that paraffin. So what I did was I ended up making three candles. I tested three candles. The first candle and I, they were all tested in this jar. So the first candle was 100% Pro Blend 400. The second candle was 50% Pro Blend 400 and the third candle was 25% Pro Blend 400 and the uh, rest of those two candles was my C3 wax and I let I, I actually let those cure for about a week um, I'm still testing them I, I have been burning all three of them for the past three days and they're about down to maybe here uh, it takes a while for this to burn down and I only let the candles burn three to four hours at a time and then I blow it out. I might relight it later again in the day, otherwise I'll just do it the following day or the next day. Um, so it does take a while to burn this candle, so it's going to be testing for a while. But I have to say right away, let me just describe this wax first of all. It comes in a slab. It's a slab form. 
and it's a very very soft wax it has a very low melt point I think the melt point is 124 degrees so it heats up really quick it melts really quick uh, if there's ever been a time that you know you've been in the kitchen and you're using the double boiler and it's taking forever for your wax to melt you do not have that problem with this wax because I put it in the double boiler and it took maybe all of five minutes and it was melted uh, so it is a very soft wax very low melt point um, very easy to uh, manipulate and to cut uh, I have had blocks of wax before I've had the IGI 6006 which I thought was a very greasy type of wax um, I have had the C6 which is the coconut soy which is also a very soft and kind of somewhat of a mushy wax but I like my flakes okay C3 as well as the Pro Blend 650 come in flake form and I find the flakes very easy to measure out I keep a scoop inside of my box because I always order the cases so I keep a scoop in there and I can just measure it out and what I need and then I don't even need to touch the wax I just use my scoop and then I'm I go so I get the wax and I started to measure it out had no problems measuring it out um, it is a very soft wax but I literally I literally used a butter knife it is so soft you can just cut it you can just slice it um, and then just put it in the pan and I actually had gloves on because I had to take some out because I was measuring it I was cutting it up and putting it into my pouring pitcher. My pouring pitcher was on my scale and so I did a couple of times have to reach in and, and take some out and add some and take some out and so it is I could tell before I even put the gloves on because I did I did touch it. Um, it is a very very soft wax and it is very greasy to the touch so you do want to wear gloves when you're using this and working with it but uh, I found it very easy to to measure out and to work with and I have it wrapped up and um, it melted quickly and the first thing I noticed was the beautiful color that it produced it is the most beautiful and I wish I had brought one now I have three of them burning I have one in the bedroom and two in the living room and I should have brought it here uh, to show you guys but it has the most beautiful white opaque pearlescent kind of white color I can't describe it I could tell a difference immediately when I poured the candle um, as soon as I I melted it and I added the fragrance and I poured it into the jar I could tell immediately in the jar that it was significantly different from the C3 C3 you know it, it is a white candle you know but there, there's something almost very like a pearl white color with the Pro Blend 400. I can't even describe it. It's beautiful. Um, I did use, I, I do use the CD18 wicks, which I wish I could find another wick, and we're going to talk about that in a second. I might be able to find another wick. I don't know. But I do use the CD series, and CD series are kind of known for being a very sooty, mushroomy type wick. And for this jar here, I use a CD18. I could probably go up to a CD20, maybe even a CD22, but the bigger you go in CD wicks, the more soot and the more mushrooms you're going to have, or the more mushrooming you're going to have, rather. And so I wanted to keep that to a minimum, and so I I stopped it at CD18. I used to use CD16, but I did opt to go up to a CD18. Um, but the CD series they're the only ones that I've had luck with the only other ones that I've tried are the HTP wicks and the eco wicks and I did not like either one of those but I tested these three candles and I tested them with the CD 18 so I poured it and sure enough it was a one pour deal uh, it was beautiful when it set uh, I went back several hours later and it was gorgeous it was a beautiful nice smooth top uh, I think I took, I know I took pictures. I'm going to have to look in my camera and see if I have any pictures to add so I can add it to this video because I knew I was going to be talking about it in this video and I thought, let me take some pictures of this and, and add it in. So I, I hope I still have those. But I did not have to use any heat gun to, you know, whenever I make my candles, I always notice with the C3 that I get this one little line around my wick. It's almost, it's, it's, I won't even consider it a crack but it, it's 
just this little tiny round thing no matter what I do no matter what I do I always have that little round thing and I always just top it off with my um, my, my heat gun and then I call it a day uh, so I was really curious to see about that one little line that I always get and I didn't get it and so I really was happy about that uh, it was a very nice smooth top did not need the heat gun at all beautiful beautiful jar adhesion beautiful jar adhesion it was just really nice it was an overall beautiful candle I really liked the way it turned out so I let them cure all of them for a week and then I lit them like I said about three days ago and the first one the minute I lit that first candle I could smell that candle within probably the first five minutes and and I just want to say something about paraffin I know I talked about the toxin and whatnot but I actually when I first started making candles and wax melts I did not know the difference between different waxes I didn't know the difference between soy beeswax paraffin um, or, or coconut or anything like that right I didn't know the difference and I it took me a while to figure out that places like uh, Y Yankee Candle for example they use 100% paraffin in their candles that is why they smell so darn good uh, they smell so good and they're so strong and they fill up a room with a beautiful scent and it's so hard to achieve that kind of hot throw with soy because the chemical makeup is so different from paraffin so if you want it's almost like you have to decide what what you want do you want a healthier candle a cleaner candle a cleaner burning candle or do you want a uh, beautiful uh, fragrance that's going to smell your whole house it's almost like it's one of the two you can't have both kind of a thing um, and so up until this point I have chosen a soy candle and I I still want to continue with a soy candle because that is important to me to have a clean burning candle uh, but I do want to put that out there that places like you know big places like Yankee Candle they do use paraffin and so that does make a difference in the uh, hot throw uh, but anyway I noticed immediately when I lit that candle that the smell just started like that and I was blown away because I have never smelled that kind of a hot throw with my C3 candles ever ever and I, I, I just was taken aback however I smelled the candle and the, the candle smelled wonderful but I could see the black cloud coming from the soot of the wick. And I thought to myself, wow, I, I, don't, I don't care how wonderful the candle smells. I can't, I can't sell a candle that has black soot emanating from the wick. And a lot of that has to do with, yes, this, the paraffin, the type of wax, it is going to create more soot. Uh, it is a different type of wax from the C3 and it is going to obviously, in, it, it, there's something with the CD wicks and the paraffin that just don't go together. And so that was a big disappointment. As a matter of fact, it was so bad that I had to blow it out. I, I could not handle the smoke. It was just horrible. But in the few 10 or 15 minutes that I had uh, that candle lit, the smell was fabulous but the smoke coming from the wick was just too much uh, the second candle uh, the smell was still good uh, it was still the same and uh, the I would say probably the uh, soot and the smoke coming up from it wasn't as bad as the first one but it was still there nonetheless and I'd say the third one was probably very very close to the second one um, hot throw I think it wasn't as much as that first one but it was pretty good it was better than it was better than the third one with 25% paraffin was better than just 100% soy so there there was a difference I think that that 25% of paraffin does contribute to a better hot throw and so I think if I were to use or incorporate the 400 uh, in the future I would probably do 25% um, in the future however that leads me to the wick issue so uh, a couple of weeks ago well no it was actually like a week ago um, probably more like a couple of days ago actually I was watching um, a YouTube channel and I can't think of the guy's name but he was from the black tie uh, candle company I'm not sure if that's the correct name I apologize if it isn't the correct name but he was talking about waxes 
uh, in one of his YouTube videos. He makes videos all about candle making. And I commented and we started talking about this little incident and I made a comment about the ProBlend 400. And he asked me to update him. He, I guess he had never tried that one and so he asked me to update him how it went. I responded the day after when I lit the candles and I said this is how it went. Hot throw is amazing but the soot is horrible. And he did respond back and he said, well, I'm not surprised with the C with the CD series. He said, you might want to try the LX series, the Premier 700 or the Zinc or all three. Uh, and you might have a better uh, outcome with that soot. So I really appreciate that. And uh, I that's exactly what I did. I went on to Flaming Candle and I bought, um, I, I could not get the Zinc or the LX wicks because they were out of stock but i was able to get the premier 765 the premier 780 and the premier 785 so i bought three of the um packs of dozen it was like three dollars and nine cents for each bag i bought three of those so uh, i am going to try all three of them them they're very similar in size and i kind of uh, i look at these sizes as being equivalent to maybe a CD, uh, maybe a CD 12, 16, and 18 type thing. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, so that will kind of give me an idea to uh, be able to play with those wicks. So as soon as I get those, I'm going to be wick testing. And I'm going to be wick testing with probably either 50 50, 50 soy, 50 C3, or 25 paraffin. Um, uh, did I say soy and C3? I meant paraffin and C3. But I'm going to be testing uh, because I think from here forward, I, I'm really, really considering to add a little bit of the paraffin to my candles. I don't want them to be all paraffin. I, I can't do an all paraffin candle. But if I could add even just the 25% and, um, you know, maybe take care of some of the glass adhesion problems that I have, maybe increase the hot throw. Um, you know, if I could, and, and just, it's a beautiful looking wax. I really love the color of it. I love the color of it. So if I could just do even, uh, even 25% paraffin into my candle, um, I think I want to do that. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, or if you've ever tried the ProBlend 400 and what your experiences are with it, because I'm really curious. But I am going to be wick testing with the Premier, and I'm going to see if that works. And I signed up for uh, a notification when the Zinc and the LX are back in stock. So the next time I, I am able to get them, I will try them. I also have not checked on Candle Science's website to see if they have them. Um, I'm actually going to be placing my fall fragrance order order soon this week, and so I think I will check Candle Science and see if they have the uh, Zinc or the LX and then try those. Now also, I am going to be trying dual extra large wooden wicks. Now for the longest time, I have been wanting to try wooden wicks. I think that they're very beautiful. I think that they can make a candle go from blah to luxurious. luxurious. And so I have been wanting to try them and I thought, well, why not? This is a better time than any because I'm going to be wick testing when these other wicks show up. And so this will be a good time to test it. It'll be a good time to test it in the, the Pro Blend 400, a good time to test it in the C3. So uh, I have got the double, okay, the double, the dual extra large wooden wicks coming and just to give you guys an idea on price I bought a small bag of 10 wooden wicks and those were five dollars and 69 cents for a bag of 10. Now for a bag of 12 for the premier and any other type of wick that you get a pre-tabbed wick uh, for a bag of 12, it was $3.09, so there is a difference. There's a pretty significant difference between the wooden wicks and the regular wicks. Um, also, for the wooden wicks, they do not come pre-tabbed. You have to buy the tabs separate. And I bought a bag of 10 of the tabs for $1.09, so you're looking at almost $7 for 10 wicks of the wooden wicks. Now, of course, if you buy in bulk, you're going to save a little bit. It's going to be the unit price is going to reduce a little bit. Um, but it is a significant increase in money uh, going toward your wick. So if I were to 
let's say try this and absolutely fall in love with it and love it and use it and switch over it would ultimately be a little bit more expensive uh, and I don't know if I'm going to do that but I am looking forward to trying that so next month when I come on here and I do an update hopefully I'll be able to show you what the wooden wicks turned out to be with what if they worked how they worked and just kind of update you guys and I will also update you on the um, the premiere okay the three different sizes of premiere wicks that I have coming and maybe by then I will also have the zinc and the LX as well all right so enough about wax I feel like I went on forever I did uh, I apologize but I had so much to go over okay so let's get into the fragrances I don't have a whole lot this time because this month I I feel like I bought a lot of fragrance oil but the majority of it was just replacing stock you know upping my inventory replacing things that I, I sold all of them uh, so I, I did buy quite a few fragrance oils but they were just the regular stuff I think I purchased I purchased some more blackberry and sage I purchased some more tobacco and bay leaf I purchased more April Downey I purchased more fruit loops amber uh, black amber and lavender um, I think I, I that might have been it I don't know I feel like there oh I purchased some more rose petals so I have been purchasing oils but like I said it's just been replenishing so the new ones that I got actually before I start with that um, I want to go back to last month last month I told you guys about a story where a customer reached out to me and she ended up telling me that there was a uh, an Etsy store an Etsy shop where she bought um, wax melts from and there was a particular scent that she really really liked but that this Etsy shop was closing down and she was on the hunt to try to recreate this scent to find this scent and she couldn't remember the name of it or no I think she told me the name of it in my Etsy message but I couldn't remember the name of it when I did my video but it was actually called Scottish Highlands okay and she described it as being uh, tobacco and whiskey which I then went to Flaming Candle and I purchased a small four ounce of the pipe tobacco and a small four ounce of the whiskey and I blended those two together and uh, she bought one and she it was strong okay I'm not gonna lie I have to tell you that Flaming Candle uh, they knew exactly what they were doing when they were mixing up trying to find that whiskey scent because it smells exactly like whiskey and when I say whiskey I mean you are getting a shot through your nose type of whiskey it is whiskey and I don't think it was what she was looking for it was a little bit too whiskey and so I ended up buying some she, she did say that it was close but there was a sweetness that was missing to it now she also tried my sweet tobacco and vanilla but that wasn't quite it either it was just a different kind of smell so I went on the hunt to try to figure out what I could add to this pipe tobacco and this whiskey and I ended up purchasing a um, I ended up purchasing a where the heck is it very vanilla and I also ended up purchasing a vanilla and sandalwood okay so I ended up mixing the whiskey and the pipe tobacco with both of those and I found that the sandalwood hardly had any smell to it whatsoever it was very very mild it's a very delicate scent I think that this is good for blending but not good by itself because I did make some wax melts by itself and I did not put them on the shop because it it didn't have enough um, it, it just didn't have enough strength to for me so I ended up just kind of keeping them and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them but uh, I, I just couldn't sell that by itself so I, I do think it's a good blender oil though um, but I felt like the very vanilla was a little bit better it was a little bit stronger this is something that I could almost see uh, just using it by itself but like I said it would be a, it, to me it's more of a blender type fragrance I think the vanillas unless there's a scent associated to it like blueberry and vanilla or strawberry and vanilla or whatever the case may be 
Uh, vanilla is good, but not maybe necessarily on its own. Maybe it needs something a little extra, and I feel like that's how I feel about these two vanillas. Although, if I had to choose which one I like better, I like this one better and not the sandalwood and vanilla because that one is very, very, very mellow and very light to me. So, I, I do like this one. There's almost like a uh, cake like a, uh, it uh, it actually smells, it reminds me of true uh, vanilla bean. Like if you're baking, that's what it smells like to me. Uh, it has that kind of a, a smell to it and it's not bad, but I, I again, I feel like it needs to be uh, added to something, something, you know, um, I don't know, something like maybe the cake batter or um, it's kind of making me think of like, isn't there a, isn't there a birthday cake, uh, fragrance oil? I don't know, but it's, it's a, it's a blender oil to me. So I did try to blend it with the whiskey and the tobacco and I sent another one out to this customer and she reached back out to me and she's like, man, she was like, there's just something there, there's something that I'm not getting right in, uh, explaining to me what this scent was and so what she offered to do was she offered now remember this etsy shop lady was closing her shop up and apparently this customer had purchased all of the scottish highlands from her but she had one cube left and she was willing to share that cube with me so this is the one that she sent me she sent me this in the mail it's called scottish highlands and this is what she had left and she was willing to share that with me okay so uh yeah there, there is something um there is something sweet about it and i i, I cannot put my I, I just can't put my finger on it i don't know what it is but there is something very, very sweet, and um, I really, really like it. But when I first smelled it, there was no tobacco, no whiskey in here whatsoever. Um, so when I got it, I wrote to the customer, and I said, oh, that, that's actually quite nice. It's not what I was expecting. I don't pick up any kind of whiskey or tobacco or anything like that. Um, and so I then had the name Scottish Highlands, and so... I started researching Scottish Highlands and I came across a fragrance oil from a company named Indigo and they had a Scottish hillside and I thought to myself okay now we're getting somewhere maybe I can buy this Scottish hillside and maybe that will be a little bit closer to what we're trying to recreate and so that leads us to this next oil which is from Indigo and on the website, if you go to the Indigo website, it'll say Scottish Hillside, but next to it, it's Heather, which is a floral. Uh, I, I had heard of Heather, but I had never smelled Heather before, um, but it is called Scottish Hillside, which is actually what I ended up naming the wax melts that I made with it and it was actually pretty good i have never heard of indigo fragrances before or the indigo company but when i first received this in the mail the first thing i thought about was thank god there's a there's a cold throw because all of these new companies that i've been testing out recently i have had no luck with cold throw hot throw anything um, and so that was the first thing that i noticed is that there is a strong smell to it and it's a very nice clean floral scent it's a very clean that is what i get from it clean and refreshing i like it i like it a lot i ended up making a bunch of wax melts um i only bought the eight ounce bottle so i i am not making candles with it or anything it was just more or less uh just for wax melts but having said all that it is still not this there is something else that this uh, candle maker added to this fragrance um, and it's something sweet and I don't know what it is. I, I cannot, I cannot, if anybody has ever dealt with a Scottish Highland um, or this company and you guys know what blend 
this is, uh, you know, I would love to know because uh, I really want to recreate this for this customer and make her something that she really truly wants, but I'm not doing her justice at all. Yeah, it's completely, completely different. This has something sweet to it and I, I can't pick it up. It's almost like a um, caramel. I, I, I almost pick up caramel, whereas mine is straight floral. Mine is just that straight heather, that straight heather floral kind of clean scent. But there's something, there's something um, a little bit, there's something sweet and there's also something earthy to this one here that I don't have in mine. They're sweet and earthy. So I, I feel like she has blended um, possibly a heather um, uh, or a woodsy kind of smell and maybe something sweet like a caramel, maybe. Uh, it's a very nice scent. Uh, I, I do like it and I can see why the lady really liked it, but I have not found, I, 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 can't, I can't quite figure it out yet. Um, and so, like I said, there, there was a sweetness. She did tell me before there was a slight sweetness to it. And so that is what put me on the hunt for my, my vanillas, but the vanillas are not cutting it. There's something else that I'm missing. Um, maybe kind of a, maybe if I tried a woodsy, a woodsy scent with maybe a caramel, because I do feel like I pick up caramel in there. I feel caramel coming out, but, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Have you guys ever heard of Scottish Hillside, Scottish Highlands, anything along those lines? Uh, you know, she seemed to think that there was tobacco and whiskey in there. I don't know if there's tobacco and whiskey in there. I don't pick anything up like that. Uh, but if anybody has any ideas, please let me know because I, I, I'm like on a mission now. I'm obsessed with finding this fragrance and creating this fragrance. So that's where I am on that. Uh, so I've got now Scottish Hillside in the Etsy shop. I also have a new one called Pink Sands and I absolutely and I mean absolutely love this one. Oh man that's a good one. I love that one. That is from Flaming Candle and I give this a 10 star because this is absolutely delicious smelling. This is so good. It has that really nice sweetness to it. It's perfect. Oh Oh, it's so, so, so good. I can't even, it's, it's almost like a cut, sweet cotton candy type smell. Very, very sweet. This is actually one of my new favorites. I absolutely adore this one. Uh, love this one. This is a really, seems to be a popular scent. Um, I have this both in wax melts and candles as well. Um, so I also have a new one called White Tea, and I got this one from Candle Science. This is a really good one. Um, if you guys, I think as a matter of fact, this was a sample. And a few months back, I did a, a fragrance review where I had a little sample of the white tea, and I put up on the screen, I think, uh, a picture of Elizabeth Arden's white tea perfume. Um, and it's the exact same smell. I'm surprised that they don't have some sort of like dupe in the name or some sort of type or something because this is definitely uh, the smell of Elizabeth Arden perfume uh, white tea. Uh, and it reminds me of that exactly like that. But it is a very, very nice scent. I love it. Yeah, the, the, it's a very perfumey. It's a floral uh, perfumey type smell. Uh, I like it. I actually have this one going on in our bathroom, in the bedroom, and I forgot that I put it in there. I went in there yesterday and I'm like, oh, it smells good in here. Uh, and then I walked into the bathroom and I'm like, oh yeah, it's that white tea. I forgot all about it. So it does have a very, very nice smell to it. Um, I like that one. And uh, also, actually, uh, I just got a new one yesterday. And I was so excited that I made wax melts with it immediately. And as soon as I'm done today, I'm actually going to be making some candles in this particular scent. Uh, super excited. And that is the charcoal and tonka bean. And I actually bought that from Flaming Candle. And thank God I bought two 16 ounce bottles because I am in love with this one here. If you guys can see it. 
Um, this is absolutely, uh, oh, oh my God, that's so good. I, I, I can't even, I can't even describe it. It is so good. It is wonderful. It's got so many notes in there. I, I would have to print it out to give you what's in here. Um, I, I put this up on my listing last night in Etsy and I always add in the description of the product. Um, I always add the top note, the middle note, and the base note so that the customer kind of has an idea of what you guys are buying or what they're purchasing. And there must have been about, I don't know, 10, 12 notes. There, there was three or four top, three or four middle, three or four base. I've never seen, so, I've never had to add so many notes into a fragrance. So whatever mystical magic that these people did in the uh, science lab when they were mixing up their charcoal and tonka, they're miracle workers because they're, this is just a beautiful scent, a beautiful scent. Oh man, I like that one. That that actually I think might be um, a keeper. Th this one here, depending on how it sells, I hope this one sells. I hope people uh, really, really enjoy this one and I hope it sells because I wouldn't mind keeping that in the shop. I won't keep it in there if it doesn't sell, regardless of whether or not I like it. But if it sells, I will keep it and it's the same thing with the sweet tobacco and vanilla. I had the sweet tobacco and vanilla in the shop since last fall. Um, somebody requested it again. I bought another bottle and I started, you know, giving out my samples. And the next thing I know, the sweet tobacco, I cannot keep it on the shelf. The sweet tobacco and vanilla, I, I, I that I made ten the other day, and I'm almost down to like uh, just a few. So. And I think I had probably, yeah, I, I started out with close to 20. I made a ton of the sweet tobacco and vanilla because I just ordered more fragrance oil a couple of weeks ago. And um, I only made three candles. I actually made, yeah, I actually, this is a sweet tobacco. I only made three candles and I saved all the rest of the fragrance oil for the wax melts. And I wanted to make more I wanted to make more candles with it but the fragrance oil I get it from Fillmore and it's you know for all of you who got for all of you who know me you know Fillmore is on my shit list I don't really care for Fillmore candle supply company but I do buy my sweet tobacco and vanilla from them and I buy my uh, patchouli from them I really love I, I love those two fragrances from them they are the only place that I buy those two fragrances from uh, I would not buy anything else from them because they are one of those places where it's a hit or miss and uh, I just stick with what I know and that's it. But their sweet tobacco and vanilla is extremely, extremely expensive. It is $34 for a 16 ounce bottle. Now these bottles, these bottles, these, these are 16 ounce bottles. They are typically anywhere between maybe 19 and maybe 24. 19 and 24 dollars for an average 16 ounce bottle of fragrance oil. So needless to say, when I buy the sweet tobacco and vanilla, it hurts me a little bit on the inside because it is so expensive. It's 34 dollars, might even be 35 but it is expensive it is an expensive oil and so uh i, I could pr i probably should have bought two because it does sell like crazy but i only bought one because i needed other things as well um but that's a hard one to keep in stock that's a that that one is uh killing me um pocket wise and it's a popular one it's an in demand one so I don't know what's going on with Fillmore, why it is $35 for a 16 ounce bottle, but uh, I hope that this charcoal and tonka bean is just as popular because I wouldn't mind kind of switching over to this. The two are very, very similar. The two are very similar. Let me smell the product here. So I've got the sweet tobacco and vanilla candle and the charcoal and tonka wax melt. Oh man, they're very, very similar. They're very similar, but I think that, um, I think the sweet tobacco and vanilla is a, a tad bit stronger. I really do. And it has, 
there's a I think that vanilla kind of really sweetens it up so that that sweet tobacco it is very true to its name it is very sweet and I don't think that the I think that the charcoal and tonka bean is more of a earthy masculine type scent it's still sweet it does have a sweetness but it's not as sweet as the other one it's not as sweet as the sweet tobacco I still give it a 10 though it is just so uh so nice such a nice scent yeah i i can't wait i just made these last night so i have not um i have not burned any um but these are up and i am going to be testing one tomorrow i'm going to put a new one in the wax melter and test it tomorrow um but other than that uh i have did I go over everything? I think I went over everything for this month. I do have some little samples here that I'm going to go over. Um, I do have... Well, um, I let me see. I do have a pumpkin souffle that I got from the Flaming Candle. And um, I'm actually putting together my fall list right now, which is exciting. I'm excited about it. I can't oh my god this smells so good this is on my list okay they got me they, they know what they're doing when they send this stuff out to me oh my god it is so good it smells just like fall it's just it's fall in a bottle it's a beautiful pumpkin I, I, I oh god let me stop um I actually I got that pumpkin souffle the other day when I got my order and I had a woman reach out to me and she asked me if I had any fall scents in stock and she explained to me that she loves Halloween and she loves the pumpkins and the apples and the spice and she asked me if I would have fall scents and I said yes I, I absolutely will have some fall scents. Uh, I'm going to be placing my order pretty soon and I am going to be placing my order this week and, and ordering all my fall fragrances. but. She actually ordered from me twice. She ordered once from me, and she actually has a small YouTube. Actually, uh, kind of, it's a bigger YouTube channel than what I have. Okay, so uh, she has quite a big uh, YouTube following, and um, she actually did a video for me, opening her like a like a box, like an unboxing type video with the wax melts that she ordered. And it was such a sweet video. She did like a five minute. She went over all of the fragrances that she ordered. Plus she went over all of the uh, samples that I, I put in her order. She went over the card. She was just so sweet. And I appreciate it so much because once she did that video, uh, I could not keep up with the orders for probably three days after that. And so um, when I got this, when I got the pumpkin souffle, I thought of her immediately and I thought, you know what, let me go ahead when I make my wax melts, I'm going to actually make the sample for the pumpkin souffle in the wax melt form and I'm going to send it to her because she ordered another order and I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and put these together. I'm going to make this pumpkin, pumpkin souffle and I'm going to um, put that in her order and ask her what she thinks about this scent. So. I ended up running out of my little one, in, one ounce uh, shot glasses that I use for my samples and I only had two ounces available. So I managed to, out of this, get three of those two ounce containers um, for this in wax melt form and I sent those out to her. So I'm waiting to hear back to see what she thinks about that pumpkin souffle but it smells wonderful and it's definitely going to be a fall scent. Uh, but I thank her for, for doing that because anybody sharing and, and anything like that, that really, really, truly, truly helps. I can't tell you enough. Um, so yeah, so I, I won't be able to test that one because I, I gave it all away. And then we have the Palo Santo, which I've had the Palo Santo from Candle Science before. I used to do that in a tarot candle. I think I'm going to do that again. Um, I wasn't very fond of the scent because it was kind of men's cologne it kind of smells like a, a I almost get like a cheap men's cologne that that's what I pick up from this I'm not which is why I stopped making it in the tarot candle it's because I smelled men's cologne and I, I wasn't happy with that but I actually had a couple of customers ask me where the Palo Santo tarot candles are and I'm like oh okay maybe I need to buy it again I don't know 
So I requested this as a sample from Candle Science just to kind of decide whether or not I want to do that with the tarot candle again. And then I also got a Thousand Wishes from the Flaming Candle. Um, this actually is a really nice one. I have actually considered buying this before. Yeah, I like that one. I like this one too. This is very, very nice. This has a nostalgic sense sent to me. There, there's something about it that is reminding me of uh, my younger years. I don't know if it's close to a perfume that I used to wear, maybe when I was younger. I, I don't know, but this has a very, very nostalgic scent to it, and I really, really like it. It's sweet. It kind of reminds me of the Pink Sands, uh, but the Pink Sands is sweeter, way sweeter. This is more along the lines of like a... Um, uh, pink sugar or maybe a love spell type type smell it's very very nice and I do feel like there's some floral I'd have to look up the notes I'm not sure about a thousand wishes I know that that is actually based off of a perfume if I'm not mistaken um, but that that is very very nice I like that one and then I have pineapple um, which is something that I have not made yet I, I don't like this one. I, I think this is probably the only one I've ever gotten from the flaming candle besides that eucalyptus or that sage that smelled like eucalyptus. I didn't care for that one either. But this one, I, I think that if you're a pineapple person, if you like the scent of pineapple, you would like this. But if you don't like the scent of pineapple, and I don't, it is uh, not for you. <laughs> It is straight pineapple. I'm still gonna give them a five on this particular one because this is straight pineapple. This smells exactly like pineapple, um, but I don't like pineapple. I don't like the taste of pineapple. I don't like the smell of pineapple. I don't like anything pineapple. Um, so it's a, it's a huge turnoff for me, but they have done their job and it smells exactly like what pineapple is supposed to smell like. It is very sweet, but it's that, that, um, that tart sweet uh you know when i think of pineapple i think of a, a a fruit that's sweet but it can also be very 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 tart and and bitter i guess i don't i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm the crazy one here but it's uh i i, I just don't care for it i i just don't i don't care for it but like I said, if you you like pineapple, you would like that. Um, I think I would have a hard time mixing that up if I were making a large quantity of it in wax melts or candles. I would have a hard time mixing this one up. Um, so I probably won't use that one. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I might try it eventually, but I did use that that pumpkin souffle and I used the Palo Santo and I think I will use the Thousand Wishes. I do actually use these samples. Um, they come in handy for little things. I will sometimes use them um, if uh, I want to blend something or if I want to add a little bit of something to something. Uh, I will save these up and I have a whole bunch of them and they're all different. Sometimes I use them for myself for testers. Uh, most of the time I use them for myself when I'm testing uh, candle candles, wicks, wick testing, burn test, anything like that. Um, a new wax, when I bought the uh, Pro Blend 400, I had a couple of the uh, samples that I used in the scent. Um, and then there was actually one that I had a sample, but I also had purchased the bottle. And I uh, will sometimes add it to that and just, you know, take it as an extra ounce. But uh, I do use these. They do come in handy. And especially that pumpkin souffle. Um, that lady will actually get to try. She ended up, you know, she was able, to, I was able to make her three of those two ounce containers. And she will be able to test a, a fall fragrance. So they do come in handy. I, I like that one. That That's straight up fall season. That That's just giving me happy vibes of fall. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, so like I, I said, I will be actually placing my fall fragrance order this week. I've got several fragrances that I'm going to be buying from the Flaming Candle and 
several fragrances that I'm going to be buying from uh, Candle Science. Two of the scents that I had was uh, Cranberry, uh, what was it? Cranberry, was it? Oh, I can't think of the name. It wasn't Cranberry Apple, it was like Cranberry... Mm, I can't remember, it was a Cranberry, and I think it was from uh, Candle Science. There's also another one called Cashmere Plum from Candle Science, I think, that I had. I had I had Cashmere Plum, which I absolutely loved and adored. Um, I will be purchasing that again and having that again. Um, I will have the Cranberry one. I am going to have the Pumpkin Souffle. I love apple, anything apple for myself, so I do have to throw in a bottle of apple. There's a Macintosh apple that I absolutely adore. Uh, I will be purchasing two bottles of that because I have apple going in the house uh, from September to January. I, I love apples and I love cinnamon. So that is like my go-to and then I'll mix it up with the nutmegs and the spice and stuff like that. But that's pretty, pretty much how it is in the house over the winter. Uh, I love those types of scents and so I will have the Macintosh apple, um, the cashmere plum, the cranberry pumpkin souffle. I think there's uh, there's probably four other ones that I put in the cart that I would have to go back and, and double check. Uh, but there's several of them. I think there's a cinnamon stick in there as well. Um, I'm not sure about the cinnamon stick yet if I'm going to go with that. There is a roasted marshmallow, I think, that uh, I put in the cart. Uh, so, so there's quite a few and so that is coming up and I will hope to have those scents out by September 1st. Uh, like I said, I am, going to back, I am going to have to go back to work August 11th and so I'm kind of uh, feeling the crunch right now and I'm getting a little bit stressed out and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do everything and get my fall fragrances up by September 1st. So. I'm trying to get these orders in so that I can get something and, and possibly make them all before I go back to work, if at all possible. Uh, but that's what's going on. So um, anyway, let me stop before I keep rambling on. Uh, thank you guys if you tuned in and especially a big thank you if you made it to the end because I know probably the first half talking about wicks and wax was boring. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, but uh, if you made it through, I thank you. And until next week or until next month, I will see you guys later. Have a good one.